So we're going to switch gears back to, um, in a way, where we began the day, which was in uh, the, a display of great talent in youth. And uh, we're very fortunate today also to return, in a way, to radio. Uh, From the Top is a great program. Um, it's available here in Philadelphia on WRTI, uh, 3 o'clock on Sunday afternoons, right after the Philadelphia Orchestra. Um, and we had the pleasure, some of us, of experiencing a little introduction to, uh, to From the Top a few years ago with um, Michael Thurber, um, who was uh, both an alumni of uh, From the Top as well as a uh, board member now. Um, he's a great bass player, wonderful artist. Uh, you should t tune into his um, social media feed, too. He's great. Um, this year is a, a year of change for From the Top, which has been broadcasting for many years. Um, they're switching the, the format, and they have a, a, a batch of new hosts um, for the broadcast, one of whom is uh, with us today, Peter Dugan. He's uh, both a graduate of the, or not a graduate, but, a, but a, um, he had performed on the program as a student in his youth, and now he's back as an accomplished pianist in his own right. Um, and uh, leading a great uh, programs as, as host as well. And Laura Futamura is here with us. She's a, a, a senior in high school, junior in high school, um, uh, in nearby New Jersey, and a flutist. And she's going to perform a wonderful piece, Fanmi Iman, from Valerie Coleman, who, for p folks in the area, um, has a commission uh, for the opening night of the Philadelphia Orchestra, Valerie Coleman has a piece on that program. But this piece that we're going to hear first um, is uh, based on the poem by Maya Angelou, which is uh, Fanmi Eamon is Haitian Creole for human family. It's a great poem. And for that, I told you, I warned you that if you have talents, we're going to draw on you. So I <laughs> conscripted Crystal Hailing to read the poem for us. Human Family by Maya Angelou. I note the obvious differences in the human family. Some of us are serious, some thrive on comedy. Some declare their lives are lived as true profundity, and others claim they really live the real reality. The variety of our skin tones can confuse, bemuse, delight. Brown and pink and beige and purple tan and blue and white. I've sailed upon the seven seas and stopped in every land. I've seen the wonders of the world, not yet one common man. I know 10,000 women called Jane and Mary Jane, but I've not seen any two who really were the same. Mirror twins are different, although their features jibe, and lovers think quite different thoughts while lying side by side. We love and lose in China, we weep in England's moors, and laugh and moan in Guinea, and thrive on Spanish shores. We seek success in Finland, are born and die in Maine. In minor ways we differ, in major ways we're the same. I note the obvious differences between each sort and type, but we are more alike, my friends, then we are unalike. We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike.
Thank you. Oh. Well, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for having us. And one more round of applause for Laura Futamora, please. Thank you. That piece was actually just written this past year. It was commissioned by the National Flute Association for their high school soloist competition. Uh, Laura performed, she competed in the competition, performed that piece, and then won the award for best performance of a new work for that performance. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm just, this, you want to take a seat and kind of keep it casual? Yeah, sure. Um, this is working, right? So, it's on? Yeah. Okay. One of the things that's really neat about that piece, there's an Easter egg in there. If anyone knows Morse code by chance in the audience, <laughs> no? Um, well, there's that one moment where yeah. you sp talk about what you do in that spot. So I was supposed to imitate the djembe drum in that place because this piece goes all over the all over the world actually, all these different cultural aspects and all the different sections. And that section was Africa, and I was supposed to play uh, the djembe drum on the flute and imitate Morse code that said Unity, so U N I T Y. So hidden messages goes along with the poem. Can you, sorry, I, we didn't rehearse this, but can you just play that, just that one yeah, spot sure. for a second for us to demonstrate? There it is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, Laura and I met when she came on from the top in November, and we played this piece together, and any of you who are familiar with From the Top probably know us for our show on NPR, but that's actually just one part of what we do there. And a large, uh, even especially in recent years, a very important part of the work at From the Top is in community engagement and arts leadership. 
So that means a lot of different things, but part of it is creating a safe space for young musicians like you, Laura, yeah. um, who are under a lot of pressure and often in situations like the competition that, that you did where there is this very intense uh, pressure and it's sometimes can be a little bit isolating. So one of the things we do it from the top is create a safe space where we can engage in dialogue and talk with the musicians about some of the challenges and also some of the joys of being a, a young artist. Um, and on the community engagement side, um, you know, part of that is challenging the young musicians to go outside of their comfort zone. And in many cases, that means performing for parts of the population or certain demographics that you would not expect to find at a typical um, you know, Verizon Hall uh, concert experience. So I was wondering to that, if, if you could speak a little bit about your experience on From the Top and the, the time you spent there, particularly in community engagement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So my particular show, we went to a soup kitchen by the performance area. So we went there and performed. We helped out backstage, well, organizing all the food, getting all the food ready to give out to the people. And I think the biggest thing I took out of that was how similar everyone was to us. It goes along with the poem that we just read. Everyone is human. And that really hit me hard when I was there. There was this one case because people uh, under underappreciated, they're they seem to be dehumanized sometimes. So it's hard to remember that they are also human. And there's this one case, two of my friends were supposed to fold these boxes and to recycle them outside. And they were struggling. They didn't know how to fold the boxes. And one guy that was going into the soup kitchen, he saw them struggling. He got out of line just to help them unfold these boxes and put them in the recycling bin. And that really stuck with me because it just reminds you that even when you don't think you have anything left to give, you can always give to other people. And that really, really touched me. And yeah. yeah. Can, you, can you also talk about, um, so this was all the day after yeah, the, our performance. The, we, we taped the radio show. Can you also talk about, you know, if there's anyone in the room at the soup kitchen who heard you perform or if there was, you know, anything that stuck out to you yeah. in so that way? Yeah, so while we performed, there was these two little girls. One of them was five, one of them was seven, and they're sisters. They were there with their family. Their parents were watching our, our, us perform. And during the performance, I saw the little girl. She was dancing around while we performed. She was like, bouncing around the table, and the other girl was pretending to play the trombone and like air trombone the whole time. It was really, really cute. And after the show, they were really, really excited. They came up to us, they wanted to take pictures, they wanted to touch our instruments. We got to talk to the parents, and the parents told us that the little girl that was pretending to play the air trombone, she wanted to become a classical trombonist when she grew up. And that was, first of all, a girl that wants to play trombone in the classical area. That's crazy. <laughs> and it's, it really, really, gives me hope because classical music is definitely a dying art form, especially in my generation. I feel like it's starting to go away. And seeing these young little girls being so inspired by our performance really, really touched me and reminded me why I do what I do. That's, that's awesome. And hopefully help change your mind that it's not going to die. As <laughs> yeah. um, I, I also wanted to ask in terms of having an experience like that, how does that ch in any way change or teach you something about your role as an artist or what it means to be a musician and, and what kind of power you have as a musician? Yeah. So as a young musician, the industry is really cutthroat. You always have to be perfect. You can't get any wrong notes because that, that's the people that get the orchestra jobs, the people who do it perfectly. But it's hard to remember that music is meant to connect with other people. Like, you don't just go on stage, wiggle your fingers, play all the right notes, and just some people are watching you wiggle your fingers. You're connecting with the audience. And that performing in these unconventional music halls, where people are not as familiar with classical music, it really reminds you that music is universal. Everyone can experience music and art. 
oh, I saw the, uh, the virtual reality. Art is universal. Everyone can experience and feel art and music. And so it really reminds you of the deeper meaning behind pl playing music and being a classical musician on the surface, but yeah. being an artist down below. Um, you are obviously an amazingly accomplished flutist. Um, you. You're studying at Juilliard Pre-College. You're there every Saturday. Mm -hmm. But in your the other side of your life, from Monday through Fridays, you go to another <laughs> exceptional school. Uh, you're a STEM kid. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about that experience? Yeah. So my high school is called High Technology High School. And so that sort of gives you an idea what it's like there. It's a public school, but it's vocational. So we have a lot of engineering courses. Right now I'm taking a computer science course. There's architectural design, there's bioengineering. Bio there's a lot of different engineering courses. And the whole idea of the school is to promote engineers and scientists, which is sort of funny because I'm a musician. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a really cool experience being around all of these really academic people, and then also experiencing all the artistic people on the weekend. It's yeah. a nice balance. Well, I'm from the Philadelphia area myself. I went to St. Joe's Prep, and um, we were known for our football team, <laughs> which, as you could guess, I was the star quarterback. <laughs> our sports teams are the chess team, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you were, you were saying earlier that the chess, the, the chess they're the team, jocks. they're the, they're the jocks, jocks of your school. <laughs> yeah. There's, they would have stuffed me in my locker. <laughs> um, but if you could just talk a little bit about your team that you're on, oh, because yeah. I think this is so cool. Oh. So I'm part of the competitive robotics team in my school. We compete in different competitions. We actually just went to, uh, well, the other team. We went to Worlds before, and then over the summer last year, we went to Nationals for TSA, it's a technology student association. It's not TSA at the airport, you say pre-check. It's <laughs> technology student association. We competed in Georgia, and yeah, it was a really you, great experience. And you won, right? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah. of course. Um, well, it's so in inspiring to just see someone, you know, you're 17 years old, you're doing all this incredible stuff, and you play the flute so beautifully. Thanks. Something that you and I both enjoy is playing music outside of sort of what's considered the traditional classical repertoire. Mm -hmm. It's something that we like to do it from the top as well as, as a, another way of kind of, you know, pushing our pushing the boundaries and yeah. encouraging. He led an improvisation class. Like, it was not really a class. It was more like a... a jam session. Yeah, jam session. Yeah, but just get, kind of getting outside of your comfort zone and remembering that in the end, music and art is about connecting uh, with others. And so we're going to just wrap up with a short performance of a piece that you guys will probably all recognize. And we're just going to kind of improv our way through it. Yeah. Let's do it. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you.